Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. It is Mock Draft 9.0. I got my see-through hoodie on. It's the benefit of being a Packer fan with a green screen. It's beautiful. Everything's see-through. I don't want to waste a lot of your time. If there's anything that needs clarification along the way, we'll do it then. But um, I don't want to waste too much time because these are long videos, so let's get it started. With the first overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. You know, again, this this happened last year, too. The first few picks are always the same. It feels boring. I kind of want to mix it up. But at the same time, people get mad, right? <laughs> if the pick is right, just let the pick be right. So there, there's some people that want somebody else other than Trevor. Um, some people love Zach Wilson. Some people hate Zach Wilson. Some people like Mac Jones. Whatever. It doesn't matter, right? My perspective is, because even if you look at PFF, you could argue for other quarterbacks based on grades and even stats and whatnot. But... Trevor Lawrence is sort of like the Michael Phelps of football. He was just built for this. He came out of high school, and it's like, this guy's going to be great. And then as a freshman, he was great, right? And he's just always been great. He's just, just kind of one of those things he just, he's built for it. His height, his speed, his arm, all that stuff. Um, the other thing I noticed that I really like about him is that some of his best games come in some of his biggest games. For example, if we go back quickly to 2019, if this would load very quickly gotta move on here his best game according to pff in 2019 was against virginia right big game uh the year before that in 2018 if you look at his biggest game was against notre dame right so these are some of the bigger games that he plays in the games that are the most impactful so it's just again it's, it's just a little bit of everything trevor lawrence is going to be the probably the top prospect all these other guys are you know they kind of blew up like trask or or whoever in their final years trevor lawrence has always been the guy he's always going to be the guy he's probably going number one with the second overall pick of the 2021 nfl draft the jacksonville jaguars select justin fields quarterback ohio state again debate about quarterbacks or whatever but i, I do tend to think this is the consensus number two for similar reasons right he didn't just blow up he has been dominant for three years, including going back to Georgia. And even if you look at the consistency on a year-to-year -year basis, right, even like great quarterbacks in the NFL, they've got really good games, mostly good games, but there are a couple bad games. He just doesn't have bad days for the most. I mean, he's got a couple, but I think his worst year this year, again, via PFF, was like 74 or something. That's a good day. So, And then you look at the touchdown-to-interception ratio. I mean, it's, it's like Aaron Rodgers level. So, I mean, he's just, he's very safe, very consistent, very intelligent, very, just all, everything that you want, right? It's, it's a, a very high floor for Justin Fields, and I think a team like the Jaguars, and I know some people like Minshew, again, I was kind of on that boat a little bit last year, depending on how early it was. If it's a little later, like, I don't really want whatever, but at number two, no, nah, man, he's, he's just, I mean, he's fine. He's not good enough. He's not dominant. He's not going to just force this team into the Super Bowl and, and get you a, a, a trophy, right? Justin Fields has the potential to be that guy. With the third overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Panay Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. I can't remember, but I don't think there was a whole lot of pushback on this. I still think the top three picks are pretty locked in at this point. Um, certainly any mock that you look at is going to be saying the same thing. I'm open to suggestions and criticism, but I think most of them are kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, it, some people want to trade up and get a quarterback. None of the guys up there are going to move or whatever. So, I mean, look, it's 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 a big need. I know you got Jonah or, or whatever, and that's cool, but Penny Sewell is, I mean, he's, he's sort of a generational talent. It's a premium position. He's going to play left tackle. We'll move your, your left tackle over to right tackle, and we're going to start building this thing out. we got to protect our quarterback, clearly. Um, I mentioned last time how much it stinks what happened to your quarterback. But, uh, again, I, I don't have a lot to elaborate on. He's a dominant uh, pass blocker, a dominant run blocker, a generational talent. You can't pass up on this guy. That's all I got. With the fourth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. I'm a little iffy on this. I really loved the pick when I made it, but the biggest criticism I got when the – uh, seven round mock dropped yesterday if you haven't checked that out please do so Dallas Cowboys fans um, by the way appreciate you guys you know I know there's some history between Packers and Cowboys fans and whatnot but uh, when it comes to my YouTube channel 
Dallas Cowboys fans are A number one, man. You guys are diehard, and I love it. Anyways, the biggest criticism I got is that I was a little too harsh on Diggs, your cornerback, and I get that. Um, it's not that I don't understand he can grow, and of course he can. I mean, Jair obviously got better. This is year three, and he finally kind of – not that he was ever – again, not that he was ever bad. It was just like you kind of hope he would be better than what he is, and then he was. Cool, I get that. But I'm still looking at a defense that's really, really bad and has to get better, right? So we could possibly go Micah Parsons. But even if Diggs get better, gets better, what's the problem with having two good corners? There's no problem with that. And we want to get better. And, by the way, maybe Diggs doesn't get better. And some of you guys think he's already great. I promise you he's not. There's a reason your defense is bad, and it's not because Diggs is elite. He has the most receptions given up, the most yards given up, uh, the most touchdowns given up, and the worst passer rating of any cornerback on your own team. So, cool, right? You see the promising signs. You see the growth. That's great. Hopefully he gets better than he is. Right now it's not there. we got to do better stopping the, the wide receivers and whatnot in the division and otherwise. we got to get the defense to catch up to the offense. And Patrick Sertan is a really cool corner because he's similar to Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Penny Sewell in which he's just one of those guys that's built to do this, right? Out of high school, he comes in as a rookie. He plays at Alabama as a corner and dominates. Everything about that sentence is stupid, right? You shouldn't be able to do that. Very few people can do that. Now, he's not a speedster. He's not a 40-time a guy or an RAS guy. He's just, I mean, he's got a good build. He's six foot two, 200-ish or something. I'm not entirely sure, but technically sound. And that, for me, that's what I like. The Packers are, for example, way too obsessed with RAS. They want guys that are, you know, running 4-4, this, that, or they're six foot four like Kevin King or whatever. Patrick Sertan is just a good corner he's got a good enough build to take on the big guys he's got the 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 technical sound nature to be able to erase even the fast guys I tend to think it's a can't miss there's no real can't misses this is kind of borderline he's not Penny Sewell but in terms of just what he's been able to do he's another guy that's just built to do this he proved it out in college football he's going to be a good corner it's going to help your defense and I I hope you guys see what I'm doing here and can appreciate it sorry I was harsh on digs but I'm just, I'm just, it's, it is what it is. So Patrick Sertan to the Dallas Cowboys. With the fifth overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the LA Chargers are going to accept a trade and it is the only trade in this mock. And it's a big one though. The Chicago Bears are going to move up from 13 to 5. They're going to give up a second round pick and a 2022 second. I know you guys hate my trades because you say they're not enough compensation. It should be seven first round picks, but First of all, the trade charts say one second. I looked up two scenarios, one that was similar, it was two seconds, one that was similar, it was one second round pick. The Cowboys moved up from 14 to 6 for Morris Claiborne, gave up one second round pick to do it. So it is what it is. But with that, the Chicago Bears select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. Now, Zach Wilson isn't getting a lot of love in the comment section, but it's mostly from Broncos fans who hate him because he looks a lot like Drew Locke. I don't know what Bears fans think, but I have to think that you guys are going to appreciate the aggressive nature of it. Last time I had you guys trading back because all the quarterbacks weren't there, and then selecting Trask, which was a huge reach, although I do like the guy. This time I'm saying the Bears are just 100% all in. Unless, you know, Dak hits the market and we go all in on him or whatever, I don't know. But I don't have that as my scenario here. Clearly the Dallas Cowboys didn't take a quarterback. Um... So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this is what you want to do. It's probably what I'm going to do. I would strongly consider Trey Lance. I'm kind of just sticking to my board here, but um, I think Trey Lance could also be an option. The, the other reason I didn't – actually, I'm not. I'm not sticking to my board. I forgot that. Trey Lance is a little bit higher. The reason I'm choosing Zach Wilson over Trey Lance is I just feel like the Bears are going to be a little bit gun-shy. I feel like you look at the fact that it's NDSU and all that kind of stuff, they don't want to look stupid again. And I understand that. If you're the Chicago Bears, you're looking at this saying, I just don't want to be the one idiot when Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, Kyle Trask are all like dominant quarterbacks, and the one idiot is the NDSU guy that can't play football, doesn't know how to throw, and everyone's like, of course, because he's not even a, you know, whatever. So I just think Zach Wilson's maybe a little bit safer, although there's clearly risk there, and the Bears are going to be more risk-averse. That was my thought process. Either way, I got you one of the top quarterbacks in this draft because that's, I mean, that there's no point continuing on without a quarterback. And right now you don't have a quarterback. So it's going to be Zach Wilson to the Chicago Bears. 
With the sixth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. So Jamar Chase is an option. I could do that again, just like I did last time. I think somebody mentioned in the comments, at least for one of these teams, that there's no reason to take a wide receiver because there's so many wide receivers that are available in this draft. You can get them in the second, third, fourth. I mean, it's just, it's stacked, right? Similar to last year's class. That's not necessary. I mean, it's true you can get linebackers later. It's not exactly as stacked of a linebacker class. And also the talent level, there's a huge drop off between Micah Parsons and everybody else. Um, not the most elite cover guy in the world. He definitely has the tools to kind of learn that over time. But what we're going to get is just sort of a tone setter, extremely physical. He takes on blocks like a madman. He's also going to help you get after the quarterback, which is kind of a cornerstone thing for the Eagles. I don't know necessarily blitzing linebackers. Usually you win up front. But, but still, he's got that sort of mean, nasty nature that the Eagles have had and need to get back to to kind of assert – your dominance a little bit right because it's just not been going well so I think Micah Parsons is going to bring that I think this is just sort of not overthinking it he's going to improve our defense a lot and we're just going to make the pick with the seventh overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Carolina Panthers select Trey Lance quarterback NDSU um, so it was, uh, what is it, Run DMC in the comment section was not happy, saying we absolutely need Zach Wilson. Unfortunately, he's gone. I'm hoping what you're saying is we need a quarterback because that's what I got you. Um, I'm not entirely sure where the consensus is on this. I do think I like Teddy a lot, but he's also one of those guys where it's like, is he one of those guys that's just good enough that you never want to get rid of him because he does his job, but is never really going to get you over that hump? Or can he actually get us there? Like, if we build this thing out, and because it's not a great roster to begin with, we can get it with Teddy. I'm going to go the route of taking a dominant quarterback and just killing it. And if you miss peak Cam, that's kind of what you're getting in Trey Lance, right? He's got a cannon for an arm. He's a crazy, crazy runner, right? He's just lightning fast. Um, I think he's the highest graded runner uh, as far as PFF is concerned for all the quarterbacks in college football. He's also run for more yards this year than he has thrown, which might be kind of a red flag, but I don't know. It's, you decide what you want to make of that. But he has that dynamic, and, and there's no question that's the way the NFL is going. They like guys that can take off and run. You look at the Lamars and whatnot. Um, that's kind of the direction NFL teams like to go because it's hard as a defensive guy to stop that. So. Um, the Panthers are going to try to upgrade that quarterback spot, and can, obviously we got more to build around that. But um, I think at this stage, it's not it's not super urgent. But with Trey Lance sitting here, I want to give it a shot and at least test the waters and see what Pan uh, Panthers fans think of that. So Trey Lance to the Panthers. With the eighth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. Uh, as long as Rousseau is available, I think this is probably going to be the pick. I've mentioned it, you know, in the last mock, et cetera. Not that there aren't other needs and, and other things that are possibilities here, but I, I just think this is kind of the biggest thing. Gregory Rousseau does make me nervous, though. Um, I think the biggest thing is that he's built like an elite pass rusher. I don't know that he's really developed into what he totally could be. I think um, – a lot of the infatuation comes from the fact that he had 16 sacks last year and everybody's obsessed with that. But the fact of the matter is that's a massively inflated number. He was fourth in sacks, but only 33rd in pressures, meaning he got the quarterback down at a highly disproportionate and, and unsustainable rate. He actually wasn't – I mean, he was fine in terms of pressures, but it wasn't like um, – you know, uh, I'm blanking, but it's prior elite pass rushers are in like the 22, 23 percent pass rush rate. And, and Jim, uh, Gregory Russo is like 13, 14, 15, something like that. I don't remember the numbers. I should have wrote them down, but I didn't. Bottom line is it's more of a project than I think people realize in terms of he's got all the tools you need, but somebody has to help develop them a little bit. And that's not great. But again, we have to take a swing at edge rusher. He's got all the tools available. If we're confident in our coaching ability, assuming we have the same coaches by the time Gregory Rousseau gets drafted, um, this, is, this is the direction I think we need to go. So Gregory Rousseau to the Falcons. With the ninth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins via the Houston Texans select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, 
LSU. So I think in every single mock I've done, I've had the Dolphins selecting a wide receiver, and I think in every single one, it's been one of the Alabama wide receivers. And I like it because it's Alabama. You got that kind of connection, but I don't think Jamar has ever fallen this far. So this is a unique opportunity for them to get a wide receiver. And again, I understand why take a wide receiver. Well, you can get one later. Somebody's got to take Jamar Chase. He's like the, the third or four, uh, fourth best prospect on my board. Somebody's got to draft him. It's a great value. He's a great player. We need a wide receiver. We're not going to overthink it. We're not going to reach. Take the best available player. Help your quarterback. Take Jamar Chase. It's not that hard to figure out. Jamar Chase to the Dolphins. With the 10th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Sean Wade, cornerback, Ohio State. As much as it would be nice to try to fix our, what is it, 31st ranked offense, um, this is a defensive team that's ranked 21st on defense, so nothing really is going right. Uh, I know a lot of the people in the comments, as I mentioned, didn't like the Zach Wilson pick. Well, problem solved. All the quarterbacks are gone, so now you don't get a quarterback. Maybe in the second round, we'll see how it goes. The next best thing that I can think of is to take the one of the few defensive players still available, and that is Sean Wade to come in. I, I don't see really any young, talented corners on the team. You got some old guys, and you got some young guys that aren't really producing. So I do like Sean Wade. The biggest concern I have is can he play outside? Because obviously, we're, if we're taking him at 10, we are going to put him outside. Um, 2018 and 19, I believe he was a slot guy. Very, very dominant slot guy. 2020, the question is, because he got moved out uh, to the boundary, can he play? And the issue is it's kind of, I guess, inconclusive in my mind because it was worse for him. Um, so we're going to take a shot. It, it, not that it was bad but he's clearly a better slot guy than he is on the boundary. Again, that's going to be up to the teams to decide. Was that good enough? Did he still lock it down on the edge? But he's starting to fall in the boards, and I think that's a big part of the reason why. Because if you don't think he can play in the boundary and he's just a slot guy, he's not worth a first-round pick, certainly not a top-ten pick. If you think he can, do it. So, again, I'm saying he can, largely because this is where he is on the board. I'm, that's what I have to conclude. But that is going to be a big question. It'll be interesting as we move along in this process of the draft to see what most people think. Is he a boundary guy or not? So we're saying yes. We're taking Sean Wade out of Ohio State. With the 11th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington football team selects Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle, Texas. So, again, with all the quarterbacks gone, it's probably just not – in the cards necessarily so the the next best thing that i'd like to do is kind of just build up the offense you know build up the offensive line maybe get some more weapons and then plop a quarterback in there it, you know it's still possible we get one in the second round maybe we get uh, trask or mac jones or whatever later on but um as of right now this is the next best thing in my opinion would be an offensive tackle cosme has elite level mobility right super agile he's played left and right tackle so we know we can move him back and forth he just kind of has that nfl readiness you know he's got the, the size the athleticism the um i can't think of the word but he's played multiple positions so you got that flexibility i guess it's not the word i was thinking of but it works um the only real concern i guess is is his ability to handle power but, you know, again, he's got the build. He can he can get coached up on all that kind of stuff. And, again, we need the help. So we're going Samuel Cosme to the Washington football team. With the 12th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Carlos Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forest. It's always tough to figure out what to do with the Lions. Um, obviously, we're not going quarterback. You know, wide receiver is always an option because guys are leaving. Um, I mean, it really it could you could make a case for just about anything on this team. There are very few things that you could pick, maybe running back that um, that would be a bad pick. But as I'm looking through our options, I mean, we could go corner and, and a guy like Farley, but Okuda's there. And if we assume he gets better, you know, we'll leave that alone. You could go Moses and try to upgrade the linebackers. But I think when you look at edge and the fact that we don't have that, that becomes the most important thing. So I'm going to go with the highest impact to help this defense that needs a lot of help. We need somebody off the edge, and I don't think we have it right now. I don't know if we have very much along the defensive line, period. But, um, you know, the, the build isn't exactly like Gregory Rousseau, but he's a big dude, like a, just a, a, a stacked dude that has 
a lot more mobility than you would expect. I don't know that he's necessarily as good of a pass rusher as Russo, but he has that ability. Again, when you have a big dude that can move, that's always going to be a big asset. And on top of that, if nothing else, he's a really solid run defender, which I know people don't care about off the edge. We're not going to take him this early if we don't think he can get to the quarterback. We obviously do, but it is a big asset, right? You don't want to have teams run all over you, and to have a guy that can set an edge is not a downside. We don't have that either with our team necessarily. So, again, this is, I, I just think, the most bang for our buck here. So we're going Carlos Basham to the Lions. With the 13th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the L.A. Chargers are back on the clock. Select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. I'm sure some people are still mad about the compensation. Again, I've already explained that. It is what it is. If you don't like it, make something else up in your mind. It's just a first-round mock. I gave him seven first-round picks, whatever makes you happy. But at the end of the day, we, we got our, our additional two second-round picks. We got two second-round picks this year, two second-round picks next year, and we still got almost exactly the guy we wanted. Maybe we would have taken Cosme if he was still available, but we moved back way back here because the tackles are not a great value early. That's obviously debatable. That's based on the board that I'm using. I've seen mocks where guys are going three, four, five, six. You know, there's three tackles that go in the top five or ten or whatever, which I think is ridiculous. But anyways... Alex Leatherwood is a very, very big, dominant football player. We need him, and I really like the fact that one of the, the, the knocks on Leatherwood is the maybe lack of experience and the fact that, kind of similar to guys like Rousseau and a few others, he's got just the, the perfect tools, but they need to be developed a little bit. And as much as we need a guy to play now, and he will, the thing that I like is that we still have Balaga locked up for a little bit of time on the right side. So we can bring in Alex Leatherwood. He can get coached up by a, a seasoned veteran on the right side who's clearly declining, but that's not the point. I'm not worried about his physical skill set. I'm worried about what he knows up here, which is a lot. He's been blocking Aaron Rodgers on, on, the, on the right side of the line for a long time. He's a really smart guy. So that's going to help develop Alex Leatherwood into a great offensive tackle. So Alex Leatherwood to the Chargers. With the 14th overall pick in the 2021 2021, it's going already? That's crazy. NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. Um, the biggest thing for the 49ers right now is that they just don't really have any corners under contract in 2021. Again, as always, you can always resign guys, but you're not going to. You're not going to pay everybody. So there's going to be a depth issue. There's going to be a talent issue. And we just got to kind of get that cleaned up. Caleb Farley is one of the bigger boomer bust prospects that I've seen um, based on what I've seen, right? Um, so you've got a guy, 6'2", 207, elite speed. 2019, he was a lockdown corner. He allowed 18 receptions for 257 yards, one touchdown. He added four interceptions and nine pass breakups. He had a passer rating of 26.8. I'm talking elite, elite, elite. And then you factor in the fact that he has all the elite tools, right? 6'2", 207 is big. Add into that, he's super fast. I mean, he has special tools. So why is he going so late? Because he tore his ACL. Um, well, I forget exactly how it went. He tore his ACL, and then he came back, and he dominated, and then, and then he went into the end. So it was bottom line, one year. A lot of guys that... You know, you've, you've got guys like Trevor and Justin and, and Sewell and Sertan and whatever that just dominant since forever. But you also have a lot of guys, when you look at a three-, four-year sample size, there's going to be like two bad years, one elite year, and then he comes back that, that other year and it's just not good, right? There's that decline. Jordan Love, for example, for the, the, the Packers picked. If he came out a year earlier, he could have gone a lot earlier in the draft, but he came back, had a horrible year, and fell all the way to the back of the first round. So... You kind of wonder, like, what would have happened if we had a three-year sample size for Caleb Farley? Would he have been dominant the whole time and been a top-five pick? Or would it have been one-year blip and then we start to see some some issues? But again, he's got all the elite tools that you could ever ask for. The one good year we have of him, he was absolutely dominant. So again, boomer bust. And uh, we're, we're, we're betting that he's going to be a great, great corner. And one of those guys that you say, why didn't he go top-five? This is stupid. So... That's what we're doing. 49ers select Caleb Farley. With the 15th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. Um, I think the pass defense is probably the biggest issue that I have with the Cardinals right now. Um, you know, 
the board is filling up with offensive weapons, wide receivers, tight end, running backs, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we could possibly take a guy like Kyle Pitts and just kind of stack this offense and try to really get that going. But we've really just got one good corner left on our board, and we're just going to take him, right? He's sitting there. We don't want to miss out on our opportunity. Horn is another guy that we didn't see much, and then he had a breakout year, which is fine, right? That's that's why you go a little bit later, but still, he, he something clicked. He figured it out. Allowed eight receptions, 116 yards, and a 54.9 passer rating so far this year or in total this year. I don't know. Season's over. I don't know what's going on with college football, who's playing, who's not anymore. Um, and those aren't just garbage time stats. If you kind of break down like who he went up against, for example, Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss had 225 yards and two touchdowns against South Carolina. Only 12 yards and a touchdown went against Horn. Granted, the, the touchdown isn't great, but when you're the number one corner and 225 yards come against your team and only 12 come because of you, that's solid. You could also look at Terrace Marshall out of LSU, 80, 88 yards, two touchdowns, seven yards and a touchdown came off a horn. So that's what we're doing. We're going with that. Sorry for the alarm. It happens. With the 16th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. Now, this is one of those things where a lot of fans just want to look at need, and maybe this isn't number one on your list. It might be. I don't know. But I'm looking at it from this standpoint. Devontae Smith is the number eight guy on the board. Top ten talent at wide receiver. In what universe does Bill Belichick look at that and go, nah, not interested? He's an extremely intelligent GM. He's going to look at the, th this is the reason why there's always guys that fall to the Patriots that should have been gone because a lot of teams are just taking need and he just sits back and waits for everyone else to do something stupid like let Devontae Smith fall to him at 16 and he just pulls the trigger. That's how that works. So that's going to be the exact same situation here. Uh, Devontae Smith, he's another one of those guys that there aren't exactly the elite tools that you look for in terms of, you know, top end speed. He's not going to be a 4-3 guy, any of that kind of stuff. He's not six foot five, two twenty five, or anything like that. He's just a very, very good wide receiver. And for some reason, some teams, I mean, not just fans, some teams get hung up on, well, you know, maybe that won't translate to the NFL. I want a guy that's 6'5 and runs a 4-2, whatever. You got to be content enough with a guy that just plays well. Right? It just it answers its own question. What's so special about him? He's a great wide receiver. That's Devontae Smith. Don't overthink it. Don't get hung up on stuff. He's a very good football player, and what teams need are good football players. So the Patriots select Devontae Smith, wide receiver, out of Alabama. With the number 17 overall pick, I said that weird, but it's fine, the Baltimore Ravens select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. So the Ravens are furious right now with the Patriots. They would have loved Devontae Smith. That would have been a great, not only just because of value, but just fit and everything else. The only concern I have is that Jalen Waddell is similar to Hollywood Brown. He's kind of a smaller burner type guy. If Look, if, if we don't think he can come in and just be like a solid X receiver, a possession receiver, we'll probably just go with Bateman. Right? He's not as high on the list, but he's just a good fit in that regard of just being sort of that that X receiver that you put up and is just going to you know break off a man and, and get open, et cetera, et cetera, right? But again, Jalen Waddle's a better wide receiver, and I'm saying he can get the job done. And, and at the end of the day, we have two solid wide receivers that just happen to be extremely fast, right? They're not just guys that are fast. He has to be more than that, and that's what we're betting on. Because at the end of the day, I do want the Ravens to get better at wide receiver. And the last mock, I had them trading up to do it. Probably a little a little bit silly. But um, this time, we don't have to. He's going to fall right to us. So Jalen Waddle to the Ravens. With the 18th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Javon Holland, safety, Oregon. So there were a couple picks that... Um, the comment section blew up about. Um, I mentioned that uh, several people thought, I, I forgot exactly what it was, who, who didn't like something? The Dallas Cowboys fans got mad about, I trashed their corner a little bit. Ra uh, Raiders fans lost it that I said you guys don't have good corners. I stand by it, but, you know, again, it is what it is. If you, if you like the guys you got, fine. I'll, I'll try to stay away from it. But I'm still going to try to help your pass defense because it ain't good. So we're going to switch up and go to safety. And I know you've invested a little bit in safety, but again, I don't think it's going super well. 
So we're going to go not with strong safety because we'll give that guy a little bit of time to grow. We're going to go with a free safety in Javon Holland. He's, again, not a guy that's got top-end speed or any of that kind of stuff, but what he has is one of the best attributes a free safety can have. Super intelligent guy, right? Very, very intelligent center fielder type of guy, and that's what you're getting in Javon Holland. And as a bonus, if you were a Raiders fan that liked the corner pick, Javon Holland actually does play quite a bit of corner. You can call him one of those safety corner hybrids, right? He can play free safety. He can come down into the slot, which is actually what he's played most this this year um, as a slot corner. So he's got that versatility. You put him wherever you want him. He's going to come in and help. So uh, Javon Holland, safety out of Oregon to the Raiders. With the 19th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. So another lesson, don't ever draft offensive line for a team in New York. Jets fans and Giants fans absolutely had a conniption fit over drafting offensive linemen, despite the fact that the Giants have the second worst offensive line in football. You know, but you fired your offensive line coach, so now you got the greatest line ever. Fine, cool, done. Won't ever do that again. Um, leaving that alone, I actually like your quarterback. I, I, I don't listen. He's from what I can see, people are just laughing at the guy like he's a joke. I don't think he's a joke. I actually think he's a pretty good quarterback. Obviously, the fumbles are, are bad, and it doesn't look good. When, you're, when your team is bad and you're fumbling a lot, people are going to look at your quarterback and say he's a joke. I don't think that's true. There are two quarterbacks right now via PFF from that draft class that don't suck. Kyler Murray and your guy's quarterback. <laughs> that's, that's it, right? So, again, wh whether or not you like PFF or any of that, I, uh, I'm looking at it and saying, okay, so, so we're, we're settled on the fact that you got a good offensive line. Okay, cool. I, I agree that it will improve based on guys getting healthy or guys growing or just not having – I don't know why some guys just got worse out of nowhere. Fine, that's going to get better. You got a good quarterback. Now we're going to stack some weapons. The defense actually is showing signs of life, which is impressive because I didn't really see that happening. We still need to add some pieces, but whatever. I considered taking a tight end because that's actually a, a higher value right now, Kyle Pitts. But everybody hates tight ends when you draft them for whatever reason. I don't know why. And I know everybody loves wide receiver picks. So I feel like it's a safe pick. It's a huge need. And I really think, again, offensive line gets better. We got Saquon. We got a good quarterback. We had weapons at wide receiver. The defense takes a couple more steps. I mean, maybe I'm crazy. I think, at, at least in your division, which right now is a joke, no offense, Cowboys, Eagles, Washington fans, you know what it is. I think we got a real shot. I mean, right now you have a shot, not really at winning a Super Bowl, but you're kind of showing signs of life. I think a, a dominant wide receiver or tight end, but we're not doing that, could really kind of get us over the hump. That's my thought. Rashad Bateman of the Giants. With the 20th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. My biggest reservation here is the fact that right now the offense is way ahead of the defense. However, I'm not trying to fix 2020. I'm trying to fix 2021. And I think from a defensive standpoint, not that everything's perfect, but the corners are really young. And so I want to give them time to grow. We're getting Daniil Hunter back, dominant pass rusher. We're getting Michael Pierce coming back next year for the first time. He's a good defensive tackle. He's getting up in age, um, didn't have the best year in the world last year, but we're confident he's going to be solid. We still got the linebackers. We still got the safeties. So... I'm looking at it and saying the offensive line is improving, but it's got a ways to go. We also have some pieces that aren't going to be around very long. So when you look at lo like long term, we got what a tackle and a center. So I want to continue to build that up. We're again we're making progress. Let's keep that going. On top of that, we just paid our running back. He's got a lot of injury issues and all that kind of stuff. But we paid him a ton of money. He's a dominant running back, possibly the best running back in football. Let's just let's just. Go with that, right? You got teams like the Chiefs that that uh, their offense is their strength, and what do they do? They add running backs and wide receivers and everything else. So we're going to go in that direction, right? We're confident our defense is going to turn this around on its own. We're just going to keep going at this offense, man, because it's a scary offense. It's about to get scarier. It's not the sexiest pick in the world, but it is going to help us by protecting our quarterback more and helping to further unleash this running back. So I, I, I think it makes the most sense, although I'm a little bit iffy on what to do here. Wyatt Davis to the Vikings, I think, is probably the best possible option. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Quiddy Pay, Edge Rusher, Michigan. I have some concerns that 
Bucks fans won't like this because on one side you got Barrett, who we all know does a good job in terms of racking up stats or pressures or whatever. On the other side, you got Jason Pierre-Paul with nine sacks. So those two things combined, maybe somebody doesn't want to do that. But my biggest issue is Jason Pierre-Paul, first of all, getting older. He's a free agent in 2021. And on top of that, his stats are massively misleading. He has nine sacks, but only 39 pressures. Uh, Shaquille Barrett has 60 pressures. Jason Pierre-Paul is only getting to the quarterback 9% of the time. It's actually not that good. So we're going to get younger. We're going to get deeper. We're going to get more talented off the edge with a guy like Quiddy Pay. As far as his attributes, he's actually somewhat similar to Rashawn Gary, not just because they went to the same school, but both of these guys ended up on Feldman's freak list, right? Absolute freak of a human being. But it's underdeveloped. You know, he's just he's a he's a pile of potential that needs a really good coach to tell him what to do with all that stuff. So if, if you can get a good coach in there to really show him how to use some technique and, and all that kind of stuff, he can be a dominant pass rusher. He might be a little bit of a project, but again, we've we've got a guy on the other side and, and just having that kind of physical freak, he's going to make plays on occasion. He's going to show flashes. He's going to do some stuff that's pretty special. Um, the other real benefit of having a guy like this is the fact that he's gotten better every single year, which means he's learning, right? So I, I don't know if it's three years or what. Kind of shows up kind of average, good, then very good to the point where now he's, he's a consensus first-round pick. He's already learning. He's already growing. You get him into the NFL with some NFL caliber coaches. The sky's the limit. So that's what you love about a guy like Quiddy Pay. So the Bucks are going to take him here at 21. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Trey Smith, offensive guard, Tennessee. So it's pretty clear what we're doing here. We're trying to load up our quarterback. We're going to protect him with an with a improved offensive line. We're going to bring in Jamar Chase to bring him another weapon. And we're just going to keep building this thing out. You know, we can add a running back a little bit later, possibly a tight end, whatever. Obviously, we have some stuff to work on in the defense. But again, this isn't just a it's a first round mock only, but we have obviously other rounds. Also, I think I'm doing the Dolphins um, this week, so stay tuned for that if you want to see what we do later. Hopefully I don't disappoint now that I'm running my mouth about we have other rounds. But anyways, the, the number one priority is making sure that Tua is comfortable and can thrive and succeed. And so the the, um, the thought process is pretty obvious. The, as far as Trey Smith, the only real concern is his injury history. Um, they had found blood clots in his lungs, which obviously is an extremely scary thing. Um, if there's any concerns about that, obviously he's not going to go in the first round. He is playing right now, so he's obviously been medically cleared. He's playing. He's, he's healthy as far as that can go. Um, I also think he had COVID or something, which you can't hold against the guy. But the point is, there's been a lot of roadblocks, so it's not only a concern because of the injuries, but there's also been a lot of time missed. So there's there's gaps and everything else. But just in terms of his potential, he's another one of those guys where you take away the medical history, you give him a couple more years to play, and he goes a lot earlier than this. So high potential kind of guy, very talented player, Trey Smith to the Dolphins. With the 23rd overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. This is another one where I'm not sure how this is going to be received. I would have thought at the beginning of the year this would be the dumbest pick in the world. Um, the offensive line is dominant for this team. And there's no question when you look at guys like Nelson, when you look at guys like Kelly and Braden Smith looks like we knocked it out of the park. So we're doing a great job bringing in talent along this offensive line. And those guys are elite. And I might even be willing to overlook tackle, which is a big need because Costanzo is, is probably going to be out of here. Um, but if, if the offensive line was just doing a better job, but we can't run the ball for some reason. Maybe that's the running back's fault. I don't know. But listen, if we're going to invest this this much in the offensive line and we're going to actually do a good job, we need to see results. And we're not seeing results. My, my biggest thing is the Colts are going to be the best running team in football. You're not by a mile. So, look, it's a need because we're losing a, a talented tackle in Costanzo um, more than likely. So we're going to replace him. Christian Derrissaw is a freak. Bottom line, I mean, PFF has given him a nearly perfect grade in 2020, 95.5 overall. Great news for our quarterback, but even better news for our run game, which, again, is floundering because that's his number one asset right now, which, granted, they're both elite assets, but 94 overall run blocking grade. So who's left, who's right, I don't know, doesn't matter. But we, we, we've got some really good offensive linemen. We're going to add another really good offensive lineman, and hopefully we're going to figure out how to use it, not just protecting our quarterback, but we're just going to dominate on the ground, which I think is what this team really needs to be able to do. Um, 
again, th there are other considerations. Quarterback would have been a thought if there were some available quarterbacks that were a good value here, possibly looking at defense or whatever. But I feel like this makes the most sense. It, at the very least, we're replacing a, a left tackle, which you need to do. So Christian Derrissaw to the Colts. With the 24th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Dylan Moses, linebacker, Alabama. Um, I just I don't really care for your linebackers in general, but also we've got a lot of guys that are that are their contracts are up after this year. Um, even if we re-sign a guy like like Jayon Brown, who I think is a solid cover guy, he doesn't offer much as far as run defense, which obviously is, is pretty important. Coverage seems to be more important these days, but you still want a guy that can tackle. Rashawn Evans, in my opinion, every time I trash a guy, fans come to their defense. I, I just, I'm not a fan. It doesn't seem to be working all that well. If you want to hang on to him, fine. I'm just not interested. Um, so I think, I think actually Dylan Moses provides a really nice compliment to a guy like Jayon Brown, who is a good cover linebacker, because Dylan Moses is, is not very good in coverage. He's just a smash mouth. Um, you know, he's going to get off blocks. He's just going to rip a running back's head off. That's just kind of what he is. He's somewhat of a throwback, but he's obviously more modernized. He's athletic and all that kind of stuff. Biggest concern I have with Dylan Moses, he may be falling like a rock. I, I don't really know. If PFF knows anything about anything, he's actually graded out pretty terribly this year. So, you know, PFF and, and all that doesn't necessarily line up. And sometimes their grades, even if they give bad grades, they, they put them up higher. I don't know how to reconcile that in my brain. But um, as of right now, this is where he stands on my board. So this is about how good he is and where he deserves to be drafted. And I do think it ends up being a good fit if everything stays the same. That is, Dylan Moses is a very good run defender with potential growth in the coverage game. That can be a compliment to a guy like J.M. Brown or whoever we end up keeping around. Um, and again, if you like Rashawn Evans, fine. Then that's cool. Then it'll be Rashawn and, and Moses. But I just, I'm not a fan. So Dylan Moses to the Titans. With the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets, via the Seattle Seahawks select, Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. Listen, I know everybody gets mad when you draft a tight end, but y'all just need to suck it up. This is a potential top 10 offensive weapon that I just got you at pick 25. I don't care about, you know, needs and all that kind of stuff. He never should have fallen this far. I'm doing this just to get not negative reviews. If you guys can't handle a top 10, 10 pick at pick 25 there's no pleasing you but let me just run through this so you guys love your offensive line i don't but you guys do i got yelled at for drafting an offensive lineman great so you got an elite offensive line you now have a, a top tier uh quarterback you've got mims in year two and we've added kyle pitts this dominant elite tight end to help out our new quarterback blah 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 blah, blah right he's also a great uh blocker and all that stuff one of the highest graded tight ends to ever be graded by PFF, one of the better tight end prospects to come out in the last decade. You're welcome? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if we'll see if I get in your good graces this time around. I hope so, because you're going to love him. You might hate me, but you're going to love Kyle Pitts. With the 26th overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars via the LA Rams select, Jalen Mayfield, offensive tackle, Michigan. Um, this really just comes down to two things for me number one cam robinson is a free agent i'm absolutely not paying the guy he's not worth another contract and we just drafted a new quarterback that we absolutely have to protect so this is somewhat of a necessity in my opinion i do think i got some comments from jaguars fans saying you didn't need offensive line helper it's pretty good or whatever i don't know i don't agree you have to have a tackle and I, as of right now we really don't have anyone that i like even your right tackle has not proven very much but i'm giving him the benefit of the doubt um as we get closer to the back end of the first round, obviously, you know, I've made the comments about Dylan Moses and all that. We're starting to see sort of the cracks, right? So Jalen Mayfield, again, it's, he's a guy who has like one year. Um, some people really like him. I think uh, Kuiper has him in his top 25 or whatever, which is great. Granted, we're, we're basically in that range here now. But um, he's kind of iffy. You know, he plays for a big program. He technically got the job done. I would have liked to see a little bit better production. I think one of the things that Kuiper mentioned is that he went up against teams like Ohio State and held his own, which is kind of true. But he actually gave up a decent amount of pressures in that game. And uh, he also graded out horribly in that game. So it, it's kind of one of those things where can he hack it in the NFL against the top-end competition? 
The general consensus right now is yes. So we're going to go ahead and draft Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan and trust the process, trust that he is good. He obviously has all the tools. He's played at a high level. And at the end of the day, if he can keep guys like Chase Young off of our quarterback, even if he gives up, you know, four or five pressures, if he can keep him off his back, I guess we're happy. So Jalen Mayfield, offensive tackle to the Jaguars. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Jeremiah Owosu-Karamoa, linebacker, Notre Dame. The biggest issue that I'm looking at is the defense for the Browns, although it's a really weird team. Um, first of all, kudos for being awesome for the first time like in my lifetime. Um, you guys are just killing it. But it's kind of weird, too, where it's like, you know, the offense is, is the strength, but at the same time, some, some games you get like three points. And so I, don't, I don't really know what to do here but I think a lot of the talent resides on the offensive side of the ball so we're going to the defensive side specifically looking at linebacker and I think Jeremiah Karamoa I'll just drop the middle one for some random reason I don't know why um he's just he's just a a, a great prospect it, the, the concern is it's really just one big breakout year but I mean you want a guy that that can get the job get the job done on both sides of of the ball in terms of running and passing or uh run defense and coverage I guess would be the way to say that He's the guy, right? He's just, he's playing great football. He can do everything. Why is he this late? Again, I just think it's because there's not that much to go off of. Also, Notre Dame probably not going up quite a, as much good competition as Alabama when you look at like Dylan Moses or whatever. So there's a comfort level and how well does it translate? And, you know, maybe he's good against the run here, but is he going to work in the NFL? Is he just going to be a coverage guy? Is he even good at that? Is he going to be able to cover NFL? I don't really know, but bottom line is he's been absolutely dominant he's done everything basically perfectly in 2020 so assuming this is real he's going to be a great linebacker and a great asset for the browns at 27 with the 28th pick in the 2021 nfl draft the buffalo bills select patrick jones edge rusher pittsburgh um it was a big shock i mean i i, I know last year the defense was pretty solid, and it was really just the offense that was a letdown, right? We, we got a shot here if we can get a competent offense, and that wasn't the case. So then this year you come into it and say, man, if the offense can take a step, nothing's going to stop the Bills. But the defense started to fall off, um, which is always extremely frustrating when, when it just, you know, it's just two ships passing in the night. You know, one starts to decline as the other one starts to ascend. But, you know, the offense isn't going anywhere. The 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 digs and – and um, uh, Allen connection is just on fire. You got a great quarterback, so so we can trust that this offense can perform at a high level for a long time. You know, we got to keep feeding it a little bit, but if we can get this defense back going again, we could be. I mean, granted, you could be Super Bowl champions this year. I'm not not giving up on you, but I'm just saying in terms of what you want to be, in terms of being you know top five in both offense and defense, we got to start doing stuff like this, and that's uh, reloading. So where we've got, I mean, granted, we 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 did draft Epinesa. I wish he was a bigger factor than he is. He doesn't seem to be really getting the job done right now, and all the other guys are 30-plus. Are so hopefully Epinesa can still take a step, but either way, we've got to get younger. we got to get more talented. We're going to get a guy like Patrick Jones. Similarly, and I think this is going to fit the Bills quite well, he's a big-body guy. He can get to the quarterback, but if nothing else, he's just a big, dominant guy off the edge. Great run defender with, with high-end potential at getting after the quarterback. With the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Rondale Moore, wide receiver, Purdue. So this is great and also maybe slightly iffy at the same time. The great part about this is the Packers and Aaron Rodgers finally get what they've been begging for forever, which is a first-round wide receiver, something Aaron Rodgers has never had in terms of, you know, drafting one. I don't even think he's, he's had first-round tight end, whatever. And the reason is we didn't have to reach. In fact, Rondale Moore is, I, f I forget exactly where, but he's like early 20s. So this, it's just a ridiculous value. The Packers never like to reach. They always like value. So they're going top of their board, and they're going need, and it's what everybody wants. So it's just this beautiful marriage of everything that's awesome. Um, the biggest concern, though, is that Rondale Moore doesn't really fit the prototype. The Packers like the bigger body guys. Um, not always. You know, there's Tyler Irvins and whatnot, but... Um, they like the bigger body guys that can line up on the line and block and all that kind of stuff. And, and Rondale Moore is sort of a prototypical slot guy, which, I mean, again, as a fan, I'm looking at it going, cool. We got Alan Lazar. We got Devontae Adams. We, we got that. Let's get a slot guy and let's let's dominate. But 
I don't know realistically how interested they're going to be in a smaller slot type guy, but assuming we can get over that hump, this is a dominant football player who is a massive playmaker. That's, you know, we got the boundary taken care of. He's going to win in the middle of the field, and he's a great run after the catch. Get the ball in his hand. He's going to make plays type of guy. If we don't overthink it, this is a great pickup for the Green Bay Packers. With the 30th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Terrace Marshall, wide receiver, LSU. So it seems kind of ridiculous taking a wide receiver for the Chiefs, but in reality, a lot of guys are coming up for um, free agency. We don't have a lot of guys that are going to be sticking around outside of Tyreek and Miko Hardman, and we've got to kind of re-up on that a little bit. And uh, granted, we could always pay him. I just don't feel the need to pay anybody. Any of the, the number two, number three wide receivers, you know, we've, we've got so much firepower as it is. How much do you want to invest financially when you can just draft another guy that's going to come in and, and actually be probably quite a bit better? So the only other thing is Chris Olave technically is higher on our board. He was a consideration. I actually drafted him at first before I kind of looked into it a little bit more. Olave is actually built very similar to a guy by – very similar – to Miko Hardman. Slow down, brain. And so rather than go that route, getting the smaller, shifty, slotty kind of guy, we're going to go and try to replace a lot of the guys that are leaving, which is to get the six foot three Terrace Marshall that's going to be sort of that big body guy uh, that is a good complement on the opposite side of Tyreek Hill. He's, uh, I think Amon Ross St. Brown would be, a lot of other guys would prefer that, but Terrace Marshall is higher on my board, so that's the route I'm going to go. So Terrace Marshall, wide receiver out of LSU to the Chiefs. With the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Kyle Trask, quarterback, Florida. The first thing I want to address is Mac Jones because a lot of people want him to not only go in the first round but to go early. He's still really low on my board, and I've mentioned this before how the board is kind of slow to adjust, but I also think there are some genuine concerns um, with Mac Jones, who on my board right now is sitting at 65 overall, i.e. third round pick. If you look at the Draft Network's board, he's sitting at 100, which is part of the reason why he's not moving up, because they're consistent with that. Um, so that's not going to happen for any time soon. Possibly as we move along in this process, if teams start to come out and say they like him, he'll move up. But it's not going to be a thing, at least in the uh, first round mocks. Some of my later round mocks, I'm sure I'll pick him up eventually, which will be kind of exciting to be able to get him on and talk about him. But as far as Kyle Trask, obviously the, the, the thought process is we're not going to stick with the guys we have. If you're a Saints fan and you want to, let me know in the comments section. But we're going to move on and try to find a replacement. He's going to sit behind Breeze for a year. He's going to take over. Um, the biggest questions for Kyle Trask, and I, I saw somebody in the comments section say he's a dink and dunk artist. He doesn't have an arm, all that stuff. I don't know about that. The two questions, number one, can he be more consistent? Number two, can he throw the ball deep? He has been on an absolute tear for about six games straight. He has had been dominant this entire year, and I'm talking about coming out of 2019, that was the question. He has shown unbelievable consistency, and I know six games isn't the end of the world, but, I mean, what has he played, eight? I mean, six games isn't a lot, but he's played not that many this year. He's been incredibly consistent, and not just consistently good, consistently elite as a quarterback, so... He's, he's at least checked that box as best as he possibly can. As far as the deep ball, one of the things I found interesting about Trask, it was true. The first thing I looked at is how often does he throw deep. One of the lowest percentage of deep ball passes in the entire entirety of college football. Very few people dink and dunk more than Kyle Trask does. But I think that's more of a system thing than anything because if you actually look at his passer rating on passes over 20 yards, one quarterback in college – football is better than Kyle Trask. He is the second best looking at passer rating deep ball thrower of anybody. So in terms of those two questions, I think he's answered it. I think he's shown, I mean, he's, he's got the build, he's got the arm, he's got the, the everything you want. It's a later breakout thing, so that's why he's going late to the Saints. But you figure if he's got to develop a little bit, he's going to sit behind Breeze for a year. So I think it's a good match uh, for a guy like Kyle Trask who has all the, the tools and just needs to learn a little bit to come in and sit for the Saints for a while. Great system, great coach, great quarterback, and uh, really come back and, and continue on what the Saints have been building for quite some time. So Kyle Trask to the Saints at 31. With the 32nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle, Northwestern. I mean, 
this one is, is pretty self-explanatory. I didn't really think about it at first until I looked at the free agents, how dire this is. Villanueva is a 32-year-old free agent, and I don't think Okafor is really cutting it on the other side. So I'm, I'm really looking at the situation saying we may need two tackles. And maybe we go after it a little bit in free agency. I don't know what our financial situation is. Probably not great because very few teams are with the COVID year and all that. But um, at the very least, I want to take – our one swing at an offensive tackle. And I think Rashawn Slater is actually a very, very good tackle. I know Northwestern isn't the biggest program in the world, but they play some of the bigger programs. Um, he definitely held his own against Ohio State. That's sort of the, the the biggest one you're looking at when you got Chase Young and all that. He did a great job against him. They went up against Wisconsin. He did a great job. So um, there may be some questions about Slater, but I, I genuinely think he's going to be a solid, maybe not the ceiling of Penay Sewell, but I think he can come in and just be a solid guy, and especially for a team that's just looking for a body that isn't terrible right now, I think Slater Slater's going to be that guy, and I think he can come in day one and, and accomplish at least that goal. So Rashawn Slater to the Steelers. That's going to do it for this mock. If you uh, liked it, uh, please leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, if you have any comments, please leave it below. I really did a lot of a lot of this mock is made up of the comments. It really is of, of a lot of great comments. Some of you guys come at me a little bit hard, and it, it ticks me off, so I come at you in the next video a little bit. But it's all in fun, man. I, I know you guys love your team, and you're passionate about your team, and, and I, I really do. Even even the angry comments take it into advisement and uh, try to get the right pick for your team. You guys know your teams better than I do. I'm largely just looking at whatever stats and, and PFF stuff I can drudge up. But um, – it's been hugely informative, and it's it's a great thing to kind of get back into the rhythm of this. And so uh, make sure, again, you like and subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll catch you next time.